Now, unless you've been living under a rock for the past five years, you've probably heard of the term glow up and you probably know what it means. But for those of you who don't, a glow up is a slang term to describe a significant transformation, usually in physical appearance and in most cases is perceived as an improvement. It is the process of becoming a better version of yourself and in turn, you become more attractive, more successful and more confident. I've lived life through two different perspectives, through two different lenses. On the one hand, I've lived most of my life as a conventionally unattractive Asian man or what I perceive to be conventionally unattractive. And maybe that's because I was bullied a lot in school to the point where I you know, didn't value how I looked at all because I was made to feel a certain way. And I was made to feel that because I wasn't white, I went to a predominantly white school. Because I wasn't white, I was made to feel like I was unattractive. And I could go into so many stories of many times with peers and with girls where I was made to feel less than. However, in the last one to two years, as my skin has cleared up and as I've lost quite a bit of weight, I've experienced what life is like as a more conventionally attractive man and how much easier dating is, how much more successful your date life can be, especially online, as well as how many more opportunities are afforded to you and how differently people perceive you. Hi. For those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Matty and I'm a male model. Yes, I am just as surprised as you. A physiotherapist and a fitness enthusiast. And in this video, I wanna share with you my perspective on what it's like to grow up unattractive and share with you what are some of the benefits of actually glowing up a little bit later on in life. Without further ado, let's get on with the video. So the first benefit of glowing up later in life is that prior to your glow up, prior to you ascending, you have to work really hard on yourself, on your personality, on making yourself a more three-dimensional person. Because if you don't have your looks right, you have to work on the way that you talk, your charisma, your heart, so many different things, right? You have to work on all these other things that you would otherwise kind of neglect if you were just born pretty. It makes you more interesting. I have experienced this where when I've gone on dates with really pretty girls, the ones who had a glow up later on in life or the ones who were born conventionally unattractive or who were slightly overweight when they were growing up and then they lost a lot of weight and became really attractive. They tend to be far more interesting to talk to. They tend to be far more multifaceted. There's far more depth to their persona. There's, there's so much more to them than just being pretty. They're not so shallow and they're really interesting to have conversations with. And likewise, I've had feedback from, from people that I've been on dates with where they were like, oh, you're you know very attractive and you've got personality. Like, I really enjoy your personality. I really enjoy talking to you. And I think this is so overlooked nowadays because society as a whole, it's just so superficial. So yeah, it definitely makes dating more interesting. It definitely makes it more likely for you to have or to develop like a long-term thing with someone when you sort of connect and you, you meet someone who's your person. It also means that you have more to talk about when you meet other people. When you meet new people in your life, you're gonna have more experiences to draw on. You're gonna have more interesting topics to talk about and you're just gonna be less boring as a person. The second reason is that it makes you work harder for the things that you want. Again, if you don't have looks, which now I understand do afford you more opportunities in general, and I've definitely experienced that. But if you haven't got that, then you do actually have to just put in double the amount of effort to get the same amount of results as people who maybe are more conventionally attractive than you. So a good example would be a job that you want, a career that you want to go into. If you are more conventionally attractive, you might kind of take your foot off the gas and be like, I can kind of cruise through this. I, I'm confident in the way that I look. I can go in there and they're going to like me and they're going to make a good judgment on me. I'm going to be perceived more positively as someone who's less conventionally attractive. And you can argue with me what you like, but there are loads of studies to suggest that the way that you are perceived is largely determined by how you look because attractiveness is an indicator of health and a lot of attractive people are perceived as more intelligent, even if they aren't actually that intelligent just because they are attractive. But if you're less attractive, you then have to work harder for the things that you want. To get that university or college place that you want or to get that job or promotion that you want, you have to work twice as hard because you can't fall back on your looks. And that's good because it teaches you perseverance because life is hard, right? Especially if you're unattractive. 
and it creates character, it builds your character and mental fortitude. I don't know if you've seen those YouTubers who are maybe slightly less conventionally attractive, and I don't want to slate anyone here, but a good example would be someone like Casey Neistat, who is less than conventionally attractive. And he still blew up on YouTube. He posted daily vlogs, he posted great content, and he worked really hard on all his camera angles and videography and cinematography. And that's why he's so successful. On the other hand, I've seen people who put very low effort into the videos and they just sit and chat at a camera and put their makeup on and they get tons and tons of views. Less so on YouTube. This is more of a case on like Instagram and TikTok. The third benefit to glowing up later in life is that your confidence and self-worth doesn't wholly come from the way that you look or your appearance. You've had time to develop yourself. You've had time to develop a great personality, but you've also had time to develop other skills, right? So for me, my other skills would come as a musician, as someone who likes the performing arts, like acting. And I also really enjoy sports. So I've always been like a sporty person and I found my home in gymnastics and acrobatics, in martial arts, which are talents and hobbies that aren't affected much by the way that you look. So many beautiful, pretty people base their self-worth wholly on the way that they look. And one of the most important things to realize is that your looks don't last forever. They will gradually go as you age. We all wrinkle as we get older, as our skin ages. And as our skin ages, our hair also goes gray and goes white. We get crow's feet or lines under our eyes and our skin sags. So you will lose your looks gradually. If you're unlucky, you can also lose your looks very suddenly. So if you're in a car accident or if you're in a fire or an explosion, you can lose part of your face. And I've seen that happen to people. Or you can lose your looks if someone throws acid at your face. And I've seen that happen to people, not personally that I know, but people on the news like Katie Piper. The fourth benefit to glowing up later in life is that it makes you kinder. So because you've seen life through two different perspectives, because you've viewed life through two different lenses, you see what it's like to be treated with pretty privilege and how many more opportunities you get and how life is generally better if you're more attractive. And that's an undeniable fact. On the other hand, you know what it's like to not be treated well or to be judged because of the way that you look. And I've also experienced that growing up by my peers and by girls. I remember one particular story where I was at a school disco and this must have been when I was 12 or 13. So I was a chubby Asian kid with a mop haircut and I, I just wasn't that conventionally attractive. And my friend was dancing with this, this white girl and he was white. Most of my friends were white because I went to a predominantly white school. And he danced with her and then he asked her if she would dance with me because he was like, oh, he felt a bit bad for me because I had no one to dance with. And I remember her just looking at me, looking from up to down to down to up. And she was like, no. And that was pretty brutal. That virtually never happens now. I'm virtually never rejected for my looks, which is a nice thing. But I know what it's like to be rejected for my looks. And that's not the only time something like that happened. There've been so many times when I said to a girl that I liked her and she was like, yeah, I don't feel the same way. And again, that's pretty brutal. So people will ignore you sometimes because of the way that you look, or they won't even take what you say seriously. They'll kind of disregard what you say because of the way that you look. And this generally tends to be from people who are, who are more attractive, who've always been attractive, and they kind of look down on people who aren't as attractive. But yeah, if you glow up later in life, it definitely makes you more kind and empathetic towards people who maybe are less conventionally attractive because you know what it's like, because you've been there. I think overall just makes you a better person. And the fifth benefit to glowing up later in life is that you appreciate life more. This kind of ties in with the previous point, but you know what it's like and how rubbish life can be and how you're judged by so many different people and how you miss out on opportunities because of the way that you look, right? And if you've never experienced what pretty privilege is like and then you have a glow up and then you experience pretty privilege for the first time, you see the stark contrast between the way that you're treated before and after. And if you're one of those people who say, oh, looks don't matter or it's all about personality, you're kind of right in a way, but you're also wrong because the initial impression that you get of someone is based on how they look and that's how you initially perceive someone. And of course, with good charisma or charm, you can change someone's perception of you, but it isn't easy and it does take time. If you glow up later in life, it really does let you appreciate life more and you take nothing for granted. I remember for the longest time wishing that I had movie star or model looks. 
I never thought in a million years that I would ever become a male model. Back then, I thought that becoming attractive would just fix my life. It would fix all my problems. But the truth is, even though there are definitely advantages of being more conventionally attractive, in terms of opportunities, job prospects, the way that you're treated in the dating world, life still isn't perfect. Everyone faces adversity and experiences their own unique challenges that life has to throw at them. Everything happens for a reason. And now I see that the past 20 years of being less conventionally attractive and struggling with my appearance has actually made me the person I am today. It's made me more three-dimensional. It's made me more multifaceted, more interesting. And as a result, I have a better personality than I would have done if I was just born beautiful. And I'm not perfect, but every single day I try and be a better version of myself. I try and become a better version of myself in thought, in word, and in deed. I hope you found this video useful and I'll catch you guys in the next one. I'm on my own, broken along. I feel the rain crashing down. All around this empty town, I'm searching for the lost and found.